What up, y'all? I'm about to do something that is very uh, unorthodox, but I'm going to go ahead and just say it. Um, I am an unmarried, sexually active Christian. And I don't know when I'm going to stop. I don't know when I'm going to stop. And I'm saying this because I feel like there is power in transparency. And I feel like a lot of times as, especially in this day and time, we judge our righteousness by our works. And if you're a Christian or if you're, you know, any type of religious figure, your works is what deems you as, you know, righteous versus your righteous works displays the power that works in you. Really, righteous works is a display of the power, which is the Holy Spirit working in you. But people define you to be righteous only because you act like it. And I wish so many, I wish that we, we all Christians could just get in a room and just admit, just be honest with ourselves and honest with each other. And just get in a room and just say, I'm a sexually active Christian. I don't know if I want to stop and I don't know when I'm going to stop and I don't plan on stopping. I'm a wife beating Christian and I don't know when I'm going to stop and I don't plan on stopping. I'm a lying Christian and I don't know when I'm going to stop and I don't know if I want to stop. I am a Christian that gossips and I don't know when I'm going to stop and I don't think I want to stop I like gossiping I enjoy it I wish that we all could just get in a room and just literally own up to what we already do in private and we say and, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that some people who may hear this may be like oh my god how can you admit this how can she admit that she is sexually active she's a christian and she doesn't know when she's gonna stop but oh how disrespectful you're abusing god's grace but is it my admittance i don't know if that's a word but is it me admitting is that what's disrespectful? Or is that more disrespectful than me doing it behind closed doors anyways? Because to be honest, <laughs> someone still sees you. And his name is God. His name is Jesus. He still sees what you do. He still sees and he still sees your heart. And he knows your motives. I'm just going to be honest. Like, I'm so sick of, like, trying to fake the funk around here. Like, I have a deep conviction to not have sex, to not fornicate. But it's crazy because I'm finding myself, and I wouldn't say finding myself, I plan to do it. And, I, I mean, <clears throat> literally, like... And I'll even tell myself, okay, this time I'm going to stop. This is going to be the last time. I'm not going to do it again. And I'm just like, I may get a couple of days where I am strong on my own. And then something comes up and that strength is gone. And my will to have sex again happens. And then I partake in it. And then, or I plan to partake in it. 
And at some point, I have to admit that Nina, even when you know, even when God has given you many exits, you can leave. Hey, I'm giving you a giving you a, a chance to leave. You still don't take the door which leads you to freedom. You still choose to go to the door of bondage. Like I like I have to admit that. So at this point, in my mind, I'm like, okay, if I know that I've had plenty of chances to do the right thing, but I still I choose to do the wrong thing. Something greater than me has to intervene. Something. So once again, I am left at the mercy and grace of God. And I think that's all of us with any particular struggle that we are knowingly struggling with or we don't know we're struggling with. We are literally at the mercy and grace of God to help us. How he chooses to help us. I don't know how God's going to, I don't know how God is going to help me. And that, to be honest, I don't know if I want him to help me. I, I, I'm just being real. Like I, can't, I, I, I'm like, you know, God, just let me just let me just enjoy this a little bit. Just, just one more time. Like let me just enjoy it. Let me just enjoy sex just one more time, and then I'll stop. Then you can help me. But then, you know, how many times are you gonna say that? And then the next moment when you get an itch, like, all right, can I get one more? Can I get one more shot to send God? You know what I'm saying? And so, I guess I just want us to, I want to encourage you to be open and honest with God about who you are. The word says, because of the blood, we can come boldly to him. It makes no sense for you to keep tiptoeing that I've been doing this I've been tiptoeing in my heart when I know what I'm going to do and what I plan on trying to do so at, at, at some point I hope that you get honest with yourself and honest with God about your need of him we think we don't need God we need him I need him and it's so crazy some people might be like well just stop if you know you just I'm just like to tell you something if I could do it, I would. And I'm be honest, I can. I'm just choosing not to. It's crazy, right? So even in, even in me knowing that I can, you know, just denying my flesh, I still know, I recognize, even though I know I can, I still need him to help me to do it. Help me. And I hope this will push you towards your father to ask him to help you. And I hope you will humble yourself about who you are apart from his grace and mercy. And that will push you to ask him to help me. Not only but to help you, but for you to know that he will help you. And for you to know that you can come boldly and he will not judge you. And that he will not send you away. So, I love you guys. Um, I hope that that has helped somebody um, to move forward towards God. To have a relationship, have a fellowship with the Lord. At the end of the day, God knew what he made. God knew what we would become. We're not perfect. God knew that we would sin. This is why we need the blood. This is why we need the blood. And if you're struggling, or if you have issues with pride, or if you are willfully sinning, I want you to be encouraged that you can run to your father. Run to him. But also be prepared for him to help you how he chooses to help you. And it may not be... It may not feel good. It may not feel good. But I want you to know that even though it doesn't feel good, he still loves you. And he still calls you child, 
daughter, son. Okay? God is father, and he will chastise us, and he will correct us, and he will help us, but he will never leave us nor forsake us. All right.